Okay, um, pick it back up where it talks about Titus. Go ahead. Titus also sent a great number into the provinces as a present to them that they might be destroyed upon their theaters by the sword and by the wild beast. He said they were destroyed by the sword and by the wild beast. See, that's what the Romans used to do to people who they caught. They would put them in their coliseums and they would make them fight each other to the death or they would stick the lions on them. But go ahead and read. But those that were under 17 years of age. But those that were under 17 years of age, those that were part of the sedition, that were under 17 years of age, what happened? Were sold for slaves. Were sold for who? Slaves. For what? Slaves. Slaves. Was Edom a part of that? Yes. So Edom went into slavery in 70 AD with Israel. Right? And we just proved that Edom was black. So you got a black nation with Israel, brought into captivity with Israel, right? So you could very well be black Hebrew Israelite, so-called black Hebrew Israelite. You could very well be an Edomite and not even know it. But you said to condemn these people to hell. They're going to hell. You even condemn the wrong people. And we're going to prove that to you. The white man is Esau. Esau is the white man. Esau is not the white man. Esau is as black as you. As black as me. I'm pretty black. You follow what I'm saying? But, let's move on. Go over to point four. And pick it up at 432, where I have this marked at. Because now we're going to read about what happened to Simon and this other John. Because the other John that was originally with him got killed. This is another John you're going to read about. Let's see what happened to these guys. Simon was an Edomite, and this John you read about here was a Hebrew. Let's see what happened to them. Go ahead. Many also of those that had been put in prison by the tyrants. The tyrants are referring to Simon and the first John. Mm -hmm. And also the other John, too, that you're about to read about. They were tyrants because they was ruling over the children of Israel with an iron fist. Go ahead. We're now brought out. Mm -hmm. They put people in prison. The Romans let them go. Go ahead. For they did not leave off their barbarous cruelty at the very last. Mm-hmm. Yet did God avenge himself upon them both in a manner agreeable to justice. Mm -hmm. As for John, he wanted food together with his brethren. And this John right here is a Hebrew Israelite. He said he wanted food together with his brethren. Go ahead. In these caverns. Mm -hmm. And begged that the Romans would now give him their right hand for his security, which he had often proudly rejected before. See, now he wants the Romans to show mercy on him. All the other times they were trying to... Um, Plead with him to just surrender. He didn't want to do it. Now that he know that he's about to die, now he wants to um, surrender. He was too proud at first to surrender. Go ahead and read. But for Simon, he struggled hard with the distress he was in. This is the Edomite. Go ahead. Till he was forced to surrender himself, mm -hmm. as we shall relate hereafter. Mm -hmm. So he was reserved for the triumph. The triumph means they're going to make a mockery out of him or have fun with him before they kill mm -hmm. him. Go ahead. And to be then slain. And then be killed. Go ahead. As was John condemned to perpetual imprisonment. And they put John the Hebrew Israelite in prison for life. Go ahead. And now the Romans set fire to the extreme parts of the city and burnt them down and entirely demolished its wall. And then the Romans destroyed Jerusalem along with the temple. They finally got Simon who was over some zealots and some Edomites, and he was an Edomite himself, right? And they finally got John, the Hebrew Israelite, that was over some zealots and some Edomites too. They all got theirs in the end. But the point is, what did it say happened to the people who they didn't kill? What did it say happened to them? They went into slavery, and Edom was some of the main people among them. A black nation going to slavery Israel. But now I'm going to show you that Edom... And Israel were not the only two group of people that went into slavery because the Romans did something else later. Let's go back to point three. Turn back to point three. Right? Pick it up in verse 420. Because look what happened after this. Go ahead and read. Now the number of those that were carried captive during this whole war was collected to be 97,000. Mm-hmm as was the number of those that perished during the whole siege, 1,100,000. Mm -hmm. The greater part of whom were indeed of the same nation, 
with the citizens of Jerusalem. He said the greater part of whom were the same nation with the citizens of Jerusalem, but what else? But not belonging to the city itself. But not belonging to Jerusalem itself. They weren't citizens of Jerusalem. They were citizens in Israel, but not in Jerusalem. But what happened? Go ahead. For they were come up from all the country to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Hold on. They will come up from all the country to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And what happened? And were on a sudden shut up by an army, mm -hmm. which at the very last occasion so great, a traitness among them that there came a, a pestilential destruction upon them. And soon afterward, such a famine as destroyed them more suddenly. So when these people, after these events happened, not knowing what was going on, came to keep the people of our land in Jerusalem, the Roman guard surrounded them and locked them in Jerusalem. And they, some of them starved to death by famine. But was that the end of them? No. Going over to paragraph 4, um, 29. Right here. And read. Accordingly, the multitude of those that therein perished exceeded all the destructions that either man or God ever brought upon the world. So you mean to tell me after the Jews, a lot of Jews and Edomites and anybody else that was fighting along with them were killed in this war against the Romans, you got a whole different group of people coming up to keep the feet of the bread and the Romans ambushed them and locked them in the city. And now let's see what's going to happen to them. Go ahead. For to speak only of what was publicly known, the Romans slew some of them. Uh, they slew some of them, and what else they did? Some they carried captives. Some they did what? Carried captives. What does that mean? Slavery. Slavery! So they got some more people coming up to keep the feet. But were Israelites the only people at that time coming up there to keep the feet? No. Keep reading. And others they made search for underground. Mm -hmm. And when they found where they were, they broke up the ground and slew all they met with. So all these people who they locked in the city, they killed some and they put some of the other ones into slavery. You know, along with Israel and Edom when they went into slavery. Mm -hmm. But were these only Hebrew Israelites coming up to keep the feast? We already know the answer to that is no, because we just proved that the Canaanites were keeping the ways of Israel. The Edomites were keeping the ways of Israel. The Syrians were keeping the ways of Israel. And one of the descendants of Ishmael was keeping the ways of Israel. So these were these people that came up. But let's just prove that out the Bible. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. So they don't deal with none of this stuff. <laughs> Israel was not the only people that went into captivity to the Romans. Edom went right along with them. How is it that you're going to fight against me with another enemy doing the same thing to me that that enemy is doing, but I only punish one of y'all? You know the old saying, any friend of my enemy is an enemy to me. And you can read all through Josephus and read why the Edomites were openly fighting against the Romans. And we're not ashamed for the Romans to know that it was them. Acts 2 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come... They were all with one accord in one place. So the day of Pentecost is the Hebrew holy day, the Feast of Weeks. That word Pentecost refers to the word 50. Because they counted seven weeks and added one. And that's how they got their 50. 49 plus 1 is 50. But skip down to verse 5 and let's see who was there. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. It said Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. See, most... Black Hebrew Israelites would get here and read and stop and say, see, all the people that were Jews, and then they'll read all these other nations, and they'll say, these are the nations that these Jews were from. That is correct. We're not going to read through all these nations. Let's just pick it up at verse 10, and let's see who was there. Go ahead. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome. These people were strangers of Rome will. Jews and proselytes. Jews and who? Proselytes. So it made a separation between the Jews and the proselytes, right? But what is a proselyte? Let's go to the Nelson Quick Reference Bible Dictionary, page 537. Because it said the proselytes were there. And you know if the proselytes came to the day of Pentecost, they came to all the other feast days, including the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which we just read in Josephus. Because they had to keep all the ways of the Jews, right? Go ahead and read. What is a proselyte? Go ahead. A stranger. A stranger. What does it mean 